You're still watching Ways on Plus TV Africa. Eniton Ibironka is a lawyer, social um, sector advocate, trained journalist, and she's worked with a lot of deportees who have illegally migrated looking for greener pastures. Remember, you can join the conversation. Twitter us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Show Africa One with the hashtag Ways or send an SMS to 0818038466. Thanks for joining us, Ibiro. Eh. Anita. <laughs> yes, let me call, let me call you Anita. How are you doing? I love your hair by the way. Thank you. I'm doing very well. So I will just give um, Uti the floor. Yeah. Okay, so um, illegal immigration. I think that uh, we were having a quite an interesting conversation mm -hmm. before the show started and I'm of the impression that most Nigerians given the choice if Nigeria was would I say in the right state mm -hmm. whether it's econ uh, the economy whether it's you know security, so many different factors that Nigerians would choose to live here. And I think we've seen that happen um, back in sort of 2007, 2006, after we paid off the Paris Club death and, you know, the economy picked up, how people, a lot of people were returning mm -hmm. to Nigeria. What do you think that we can do? What kind of strategies can we put in place to actually um, stop illegal immigration? Well, you know, I did hear a bit of that conversation. And interestingly, I would say that we have two Nigerians. And that's very clear. And so when we're talking in different circles, the conversation is different depending on who I'm talking to and in what circumstances. Now, you find, you find the average educated Nigerian, middle class, so to speak, finds that the idea of a Nigeria is all nice and I can come back if I want to come back. But they find that below the middle class, there's no such ideology in that space. Mm. The only ideology there is survival. Yeah. And I want a place where I can come and I can aspire to be like the middle class. And the only opportunity to do that is to actually leave the country. And so when they finally do leave the country, whichever way they tried, they're not thinking of coming back, trust me. Because at that point in time, that's like the, it's like the ambition, an ambition fulfilled, it's the opportunity to flex their muscles. And in fact, nowadays, in a lot of circumstances, I find that, well, like I was saying before the show started, when I was talking to the other guest, a number of them seem to be doing even much better than the middle class people. Hmm. But it's, like it's unknown, and the issue of exposure, the way they come across, doesn't come out. And then they also sort of keep together in the circles and do not, you don't find the lines crossing. So you're not aware that a lot of the houses that people are buying today, the, the people that are driving the economy, the people that you say are diasporans, are actually not from the original middle class. Mm -hmm. So that condition, that's another angle entirely. But then what is driving them, like you rightly asked, is first economic. They want a better life. There's certainly the mindset of it's not going to be good for me in Nigeria. There's nothing mm -hmm. that is working yeah. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So do you think that aside from the economic reasons, are there all the reasons for middle class people to... Because a lot of middle class people are also migrating illegally. Well, yes, you see now, with illegal migration, there are two options. Uh, again, with everything, there are always different angles. Now, you find that illegal migration that happened a lot through the 80s and 90s, where you had a lot of, you know, fraud documents, all the Uluwale things and so many other things. Then you have the other angle of illegal migration, which yes, now yes. the UN migration has now termed as irregular migration, which happens through the methodology that is used. That's where you're traveling through Libya, the Middle East, you know, you're traveling through um, the Africa, West Africa. Africa, you're going down that route and you're going through the Mediterranean Sea. Now, that's another form of migration. And you'll find that, yes, middle class people, so to speak, if you're looking at people that are educated, who have gone to school, university education, you know, in Nigeria now, we sort of have that different definitions. Nigeria is a very interesting nation where, as long as you're a graduate, you suddenly have some aspiration to think, I fall into a certain level of, you know, a certain class. So you find a number of people who are doing that. But the middle class who are traveling illegally, who have done it that way, are doing it simply because the, in the minds of a lot of Nigerians, it's just not working. Thank you. That's really the problem. Now, is it really, really that it's truly not working? Or is it that we're not reapplying how we can make it work? Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm so happy you're bringing us there because I come from Edo State, for instance. Uh, now, I was born, fortunately, my father was wise enough to take all his family and he started his family in Kaduna. So, but I don't have that mindset. Uh, but whenever I go to Edo State, for mm -hmm. instance, everything you want to hear, 
yeah. or you hear is I want to travel. That's it. So I want to travel. Mm -hmm. So because you made a very salient point about mindset, mm -hmm. you know. So where do we start to solve this problem? Because yes. we already know that this is a big issue. Yes. For even people that are privileged, they have something going good for them here. Yes. They still can't see it because their mind has already told them that until I travel outside of the country before I can blow or whatever it is that they mm -hmm. call it. So how do we begin to solve the problem? Sorry to cut you. I think yes, part of the problem is social media. Hmm. Um, this follow follow kind of my friend is already abroad. She's doing well. Photo club. I think I should also yeah, go. Yeah, but you know, I think that's part of the problem. It is part of the problem, but that's in recent times. This problem that's predates always. social media. Before I was born, yes. way before. Yeah. And now you see, the first thing there is this. You're finding that, like you said, when you call, talk about the, this kind of issues, which are social issues, is the only way is really behavioral change campaigns, which is, means that you change the narrative through campaigns that are using the same platforms that push the ideology. So you're having community engagements, mm -hmm. you're having media engagement, so you're talking about things like well, what we're doing today on the media, saying what are the options, why are you doing this? Now, one salient thing that struck me when you spoke about your dad is the fact that you grew up, you are from Edo State, but somehow, you still had to leave that community. So yeah, the choice of migration was within Nigeria. Yes, but for a lot of other people, their choice of migration is still outside it's outside Nigeria. Now, I've talked to a number of Edo people, and we have a whole team of people who talk to, who do a lot of community engagements. And they tell you that, one thing, first and foremost, let's look at it. When we look at developed parts of Nigeria, we had Lagos states. We had initially as Kano was trade and then Port Harcourt. When we look at really, when we look at how we picked the states, then we had trade in Onicha, Abam, places like that. Now the remaining parts of Nigeria really had no development plans. So that if you look at it, those states as a state, what is going on there? Industries, work and opportunities, what kind of lifestyle? So the one thing when people don't have set direction for their lives, they define a new way. So you find that for Edo state people, and there's some parts of Nigeria where we feel that, oh, the women are beautiful, or where cultural norms come where women are the ones who are hardworking, like Benway women are the ones that, you know, different things that are culturally ingrained in our society already. So for Edo state in particular, which has the highest number of migra migrants, illegal, regular, irregular, whichever form it is, it was an issue of how do we get a better life? Yeah. How do we come out of here? A small land space, no opportunities, no development plans, nothing going on. And then, and don't forget that when you go, like I remember before the show, where I was talking about the foundational roots of the Nigerian society, and even Edo was two, two, a state divided into two. And so the other part of it, which I mean, that's Benway, right? But, but in, and so they have farming. They're doing they're, so where the food basket of the nation. What is Edo state? What do, what comes out of there? We have something. Other than fine women. Really, you hear them say, when they talk about Edo, it's women. <laughs> I see. No, but, but we have, we have, no, and, and I'm so grateful to the governor because he's doing a lot in oh, terms amazing. of, yes, yes, in terms of farming and all of that. He's bringing, bringing a lot, and we had a young lady from the Edo State government um, last month, and she was talking about creating job hubs for youth, you know. Mm -hmm. So they're actually working now towards making it. But I think, you know, for me, <clears throat> It has just been something that has been ingrained, that they just yes. believe that until I leave this country, I can never be better. You know, but I wanted to add something because something again happened in recent times when my son was going to be, uh, the, I mean, before he left his secondary school, his primary school to go to secondary school, there was a particular term in school that every family, I think about maybe five or seven family that I knew that traveled for summer. Mm. With a visiting visa, they didn't come back. Didn't come back. They didn't come back. Yep. Mm -hmm. That is illegal. Yes. It so is. why are people taking up those options? You know, in terms of you know, tr you know, um, moving out of the country because these people they can already afford a summer trip. Yes. They have the money. Mm -hmm. So why? See, the Ooh. thing, it, unfortunately, <laughs> really and truly, if we're going to be honest with ourselves, we have a fundamental mental problem in Nigeria, and you see, so while we may actually not do things like therapy or talk through our issues and we say we're the happiest, one of the happiest people on earth. We are, we have a defect in the fact that we're reactive rather than proactive. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't sit down and say, okay, no. So what's the next? So I remember like 2017, 2017, 
I spoke about having 20 women, let's have a 20 year life plan. The reactions were like 20 years, long, long. Hmm. How will I plan what for I 20 do? years? What's that? And then someone said, What if will I be alive? And I'm thinking, if you're 20, while wow, your life is going to be 40. If you're 40, look, look, you think you're old. In 20 years, you're going to be 60. Very well alive with your teeth intact, your bones going, and you may not have the job you're having, definitely you won't have it. The money you're having, so many things. So naturally, as a people, we're not a sitting planning people. And so we react. And so when people think, oh, you hear your friends and people say, like has been said, on social media or any other platform, because back then I remember those, those telephone calls. Ah, auntie, how are you doing? Oh, Spain is amazing. We're fine. And then they come home. <laughs> when they come home for holidays, are you seeing them giving you those chocolate and pants? Oh, you God, it's everywhere. And the smell. <laughs> and the smell. And the smell. The smell. The smell. smell. The smell is so different. No. And then the kind no. of clothes, and you're thinking, ah, if only I'm there. So it's those notions of, oh, this life there is better. Let's, in fact, maybe they aspire to be better. I don't know what kind of phrase we're going to call it. It was that aspiration that over there is better. Sorry, it's, it's a notion. I just want to quickly put that out. I'm so glad you used that word. It is a notion of a better life. Because these people that you talk about who are not middle class, who struggle and travel illegally, what do they do when they get over there? They do well, guess jobs. What? Well, guess what? They still enjoy that. Mm -hmm. You know why? So here's the thing, right? I lived in the UK. Yeah. You wake up early in the morning and you're going to the bus stop, you, you have your regular job. The illegal guys, 4 a.m. have woken up to go and sweep for 15 pounds. Mm -hmm. Are sleeping on the bus. But they don't Coming have that back. in Nigeria. That's it. They are homeless That's in Nigeria. It. They can't you afford see, free fantastic. meals. You, see, you just you just hit the nail on the head. That is the problem. They don't the want fabric too of much. society has that is it. They don't want too much. And the fabric of society in Nigeria has not necessarily been structured in a way that they can do those menial jobs. And, and so when they do those well. things, they can plan that in three years. In fact, they actually think more and they're aspiring and saying, okay, I'm gonna get land in Langbas, I'm gonna get land in Gondo, I'm gonna get land in all those far out places, I'm gonna be a landlord. Do you have know how many of the people that drive us or that do the menial jobs here that have houses mm. whether it's in their hometown where and some of us are so all put together the designer bags are go and no land no mm. nothing Absolutely. That's and true. so the next thing that happens i've seen a cycle you know i was observing it on the sidelines until i got really involved in this job in the social space and i've seen a cycle of people that grew up poor when i was growing up and today mm. they, the their fathers were poor today those children are doing way you better they, they're them. more than leveled mm -hmm. up. Hmm. There's some of the people that when you go, if you go outside of this circle where we are, are now, and you want to get things done in government spaces or in any space at all, I am meeting some guy who is top in a bank or somewhere, yeah. and the guy's English is not finally very polished. Hmm. I wonder what happened. Is that, you know, the, so you find the 15 pounds, the person you describe now and everything, that person is sending money back home. It's taking care of the whole cycle. And that is where it's like happening from, even with Edo State, where so the they, child or somebody can we'll send money. Home. Quickly before so we they run. Also want to go. So what is the, is there a plan for people that have, they've migrated illegally and probably they're tired, they want to come back? Is there a plan for them? You see, yes, now there are plans for those because the issue of migration and migrants is now a problem for the international community okay. in the sense that while they have their own body, they have their economic issues, they have an aging population, yes, but they also want skilled migrants. So when they're having people who are tired or who are not adding value, they're saying, please come back to your country. So you have UN migration that first takes care of returnees. So you find out in anywhere in the world where you are, especially in the European countries, you can get to your embassy or get to, a, to a, it's called IOM, International organization for migration and then tell oh, I want to come back home so they make all the plans and say we we'll reintegrate you now you also have the other angle of people who have probably been normal Nigerians yeah. who went there who are tired and then they want to come back home there is a that becomes individual but overall the challenge now is that for me and in the space of doing things we've had to we now realize that we need to highlight empowerment opportunities awesome. we need to highlight the opportunities that are going to create a stable society we're going to have to look at nation building from both the private sector and the public sector mm. okay. because the public sector government cannot do it alone and the reason being that government we're about maybe 250 million people the people in government are not up to a million I don't, let's, let's look at every state every level, mm. every okay. level of yeah. governance yeah. Mm. let's even imagine that they're home. let's even say they're two million three million or even 10 million and we have 250 so that means that the private sector 
is still way bigger than the public sector. And if we're not looking at civil society, media, which are officially the fourth arm of government, yeah. looking at how we can do things, and then seeing private-public partnerships, which was done in Lagos, that's why Lagos seems to have thrived at some point for eight years. Yeah. There was a major inflow of private-public sector inf you know, collaborations. So people coming back home, I'm not sure that a lot of people are going to be coming back home. And those that have come back home are running back again, and it's going to get worse. But then again, I tell people that if we're smart enough and we can think smart, we can start to say, Africa is the next frontier. Foreigners are coming in. So how do I begin to use that same social media? The internet, the information out there. If I start to talk to people who want to come to Africa, can I bring you in and collaborate with you? Yeah. We need to also drop that notion of, so that's, those are things that can happen for being able to get people back home and getting them to have opportunities. Thank you so much. You're you know welcome. what we're going to do? We'll probably create a full one hour to solve, the, to, I mean, to talk about yes. it. More. Because the truth is, we'll keep talking about yes. it. This, the conversation has started for us here on Ways, and we'll keep, um, we'll keep on talking about it. Thank you so much for You're coming. Thank you All right, so me. still on Brain Drain, we have Ayola Jolayemi. He will join us after this break. Please stay with us.